What is going on everybody? It's Hunter. Thanks for checking in with us today. I'm bringing you in on the last piece of a handrail. Uh, one of my better videos of installing iron balusters. There's been a lot of really good questions and since I was able to just record that on my own, I didn't get all the close angles and really get as detailed as I wanted to. But we got Brian here recording today. Brian say what's up real quick. What's up everybody? <laughs> um, so what we're doing is we're just gonna put in one flat piece of handrail, but I'm gonna do it start to finish for you, lay it out with the holes so you can understand everything it takes for me to install iron balusters. All right guys, now we're up here. So we're in this one section that we need to finish. We already got the posts and the handrail finished all the way down the stairs. Here's just one flat section and I wanted to take you through it. First thing we're gonna do is we got a level, okay? Our cap is seven and a quarter wide. So I wanna to try to find the center at three and five eighths, okay? On this side, and three and five eighths on this side as well. Now I wanna take my level, put it on my mark, get a level line on the wall, and I know it's gonna be right here at this height. I'm gonna to try to match this height. So we're just gonna do a little pencil line on the wall so I know center, come back to this side, Get it on my pencil line, nice and level, boom. So now I've already got just a random block left over, okay? And I cut it at the size that we need the handrail to sit down on. So I know, we're just gonna set this down flat. So I know the bottom of the rail is gonna be right there. The bottom of the rail is gonna be right there. So don't worry if you can't really see those marks. I was just leveling and finding the bottom of where my handrail is going to be. Next step is to throw the tape measure out and make this get this measurement. A lot of people are going to give me a hard time. I like to bend the tape measure rather than dye it to the wall. I feel it's just more accurate with how I read the tape measure. So we're going to get it over. And it looks like 73 and 1 16th is gonna be our measurement. 73 and 1 16th. Let's head out to the saw, make that cut. We'll come back in and test fit it. All right, back outside at the saw. We got our handrail already on the saw. So first thing I wanna do is just make a nice flush cut on one end. Either a flush cut or a zero degree. I just wanna straighten out the ends. So let's get one cut at the end. Flip it around in this case. Okay, so 73, 1, 16th. 73 and 1, 16th. Okay, guys, we got our piece. Two nice cuts on the ends. Let's go test fit her, see if she fits wall to wall. Got our handrail. Now, since I'm up here by myself doing this, I am going to put this block over on this side and just set it down. I'm just gonna put one, one nail in it so it holds for me, just because just I'm doing it by myself. So what I wanna do is I wanna try to get this to fit in and it looks like, looks like we're a little tight. I still need to bring it down about four inches on this side, so we're, we're snug. Now the name of the game is to now just shave sixteenths of an inch at a time to get her right in so she's snug. So let's head back out to the saw again and let's get one quick little shave on it and see where we end up again. All right guys. I got it perfectly on my line. She's pretty snug already, wall to wall, which is what we need. Um, next thing is, we need to find the layout of the balusters. So we need to get the holes in the top of the rail as our next step before we nail this in. Since we know that this fits, <laughs> since we know that this is fitting really nicely, this handrail is what's going to justify the layout 
for the balusters. So we're gonna take this out and we're gonna head back out to the saw. So this is somewhat the trickiest part is the layout of the balusters. And while I go through this math, if it does not make sense to you, I'm, I'm sorry. We're not gonna focus on the layout. It's more focusing on installing the iron, getting the iron secured. But this is just to show you the entire steps that it takes for me to go through. So let's do this new, let's do the numbers to this and see if you could understand what I'm thinking as I'm explaining it. So we know after shaving it, we're right at 73 inches, okay? Now on the handrails, code, is four inches in between balusters. So it cannot be any larger than four inches between balusters. So let's start out with four inches. So what is 73 divisible by four? Well, we know that 72 inches is 18 balusters, 18 times. So that would be 18 balusters for 72, but we're at 73. So, what we need to do is we need to grow. If we started out at four inches, we need to grow a full inch. We need to add roughly a 16th in between each baluster. So let's, let's mark this out now. If we know it's 73, we know there's 18 balusters in a 70, 72 inch run, but we need to grow it 16 sixteenths. So we need to grow one inch, 16 sixteenths, Let's just start by growing it 1 16th to every baluster and see how we end up. All right, guys, so here we go. I'm going to start down on this side and I'm going to time, lap time lapse this a little bit. But what I'm going to be doing is measuring out 4 and 1 16th. And then I'm going to burn an inch on every one to make it more accurate. So now I'm going to go to 5 and 1 16th, which would be the same as 4 and 1 16th. So let's just make our way down the rail for every hole. So here we are in the very last mark, okay? So five and one sixteenth. I have not measured this yet, but we need this to be within a sixteenth, you know, of, of four and one sixteenth. So let's check it out. Get that camera in there real quickly after marking that out just four inches and four inches heavy. So you know what guys, I am super happy. I've laid out each baluster four and one sixteenth spacing. So now just need to find the center. So we got two and one, so it'd be one and one. And I like holding my pencil a specific way that I could just go down and mark out the center. Okay, next step guys. Now for the top, now let's just grab one. Okay, so here's here's one of the balusters that we're gonna be using. Now look at the top. We've got a little, little nip at the top or a nib or a nub or whatever you wanna call it. So I have found a paddle bit that is just a tad larger and I'm not gonna hold it up so you can see, but the half inch is just a little bit larger for this to slide in, but it'll hit the square part of the baluster. So we need to make sure we drill the top handrail. I know we're gonna be drilling down, but we need to make sure we drill roughly an inch in so that entire nub can slide up into the handrail. Okay, half inch paddle bit. Let's just drill these out, keep it moving. Get the point right on the center of uh, your, your cross or your mark and start drilling. I like to stop the paddle bit before taking it out. Sometimes if you're taking it out in an angle, you can chunk the edge, take a chunk out of the edge. So let's once again, get the tip in the hole in the, in the cross of your pencil marks, drill down. Okay, stop it, pull it out. Make sure you're sinking it roughly an inch, guys. It could be a little deeper depending on- And the you're thickness. holding it straight. Okay, yeah, thanks, Rod. <laughs> and I'm holding this straight. So when I'm drilling down, I know I'm drilling the hole pretty straight.
also these pieces, there's a seam right here in the piece, the way it was made. And there's a little edge right here that I could feel. So I need to go down and I need to sand that down so you can't feel that piece because it's two pieces put together. Sanding that edge all the way down on both sides. really nice down the edges where those two pieces meet sometimes it's not sanded perfectly so you just got to do a little extra sand on the edges feels good no more splinters we also have our holes for our balusters four and one sixteenth apart from each other um, and now that's on the center so when we install you'll see that four and one sixteenth on the center with the thickness of the balusters will really turn out to be about three and 13 sixteenths in between. So if you're doing iron and you're making your measurements, you can go to about four and a quarter on center. And that's the biggest that you wanna go. Um, if that all makes sense, hopefully some of this math, you know, it kind of changes for each layout, the dimensions, and maybe, you know, if this was 71 inches, we would have changed the dimensions just a little bit to get an even spacing. So hopefully that makes sense to you, but hey, we got the holes drilled. We got her sanded, she's ready to be installed. Let's head on in. All right, back inside with our handrail. Now remember, I put this set on first, had to wedge it in. But we do need to get some liquid nail or some sort of glue on the ends. So let's get a little ooze of liquid nail. Okay, flatten that out a little bit. Don't want it to ooze too much outside of your of your piece of material. You're just gonna have to wipe it off the wall. So a little liquid on there. And let's do the same for this side, just a little squirt of liquid. <coughs> okay. And then once again, I'm just gonna kind of flatten it out a little bit. So we got a good piece of glue on the end there. So remember I started like this. We're gonna get our piece down and center. Now, I need to pull and pull the rail and push the wall. Ah, there we go. Okay, so let's start on one side and that side's gonna be this side because we're supported over here. So we'll come over here Make sure I'm at the correct height. I'm also making sure my pencil line is centered on the handrail, okay? I got my gun, and just trust me, I'm gonna get angled shots into the wall, and yes, there is a specific way to angle the gun so the material is almost touching where the nail's coming out. So just take my word for it. Let's get three or four really good shots to secure it. Now, let's just throw this up there for fun to make sure we're level. And guys, take my word for it, we're in the center of the lines on my five foot level here. So I am super happy with where it is. Now we need to come to this side. Make sure the rail is centered on your line. I know that I'm at my correct height. So once again, four shots. Alrighty guys, so, <clears throat> all right, so now we're here on the next step. Now, for those of you who are ripping out wood balusters, this is almost right where you would be. You'd rip out the old wood one, you'd have a hole up top, maybe you'd have a paint line on the bottom cap down here that would show you where the original baluster went. Maybe there's a circular hole on your cap to show you where that baluster went. Either way, this is kind of we're in the same step if you were to be taking out all of your wood balusters. So, multiple questions on how, how do I get this down here to be perfect? All the way across so each baluster is still perfectly spaced. Well, it's tedious, but I pull out my five foot level, okay? And we'll start right here on this one and I'm gonna We'll explain a couple and then you'll just see me do all of them. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold the baluster 
right here in the center of my hole up top, okay? And then I'm gonna move the bottom to where the bubble's right in the line. So, centered on top, bubble's right in the line, okay? Scroll back up for me, Bri. And I'm eyeballing the center of this hole, looking down my level, right here, center of the hole. And I'm gonna make a mark down here on the cap, okay? Make a mark. And if you can tell, I already have a pencil mark at three and five eighths going all the way across the cap. So there's my center line, and then there's my first mark for the first baluster. So now what I need to do, guys, is I just need to, I need to go on every single one. I can, I could lay out four and one sixteenth on the bottom, but I just don't feel it's as nice as just leveling down each line. So here we go, just gonna level down for each one. Maybe Crystal's learning how to do iron. I think so. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm just gonna hang out with you guys. <laughs> Hold on. Alrighty guys, I've leveled down each baluster, or I've leveled down from each hole down to my cap and made a mark. So now I have a bunch of crosses on my cap for where my holes need to be. Next step, guys. Now the top hole was half inch, okay, for the nub or the nib or whatever you want to call that to slip up and into. The bottom needs to be 11 sixteenths. And no, I don't really like these paddle bits with the drill head in it, but we're just drilling straight. We're going to, you know, it's brand new, so we won't chip anything. But the bottom holes, 11 sixteenths for this case. So what I need to do is go down and drill each one, but this time I need to go down an inch and a half to two inches, because remember, we're sliding the baluster in and down to get it in, and then we're sliding it up to the rail and securing it at the bottom. So 11 sixteenths paddle bit, and now I just need to drill all 18 of these holes, just like I did these holes. What we need to keep in mind, and right, get close on this one, I know we're just gonna do one random hole real quickly, but I want you to keep in mind, keeping the drill level, trying to keep the drill as perfect as you can to centered of the hole up top. So what we need to do is get right on your mark. There we go, guys. Check it out, there's our first hole perfectly straight level down from that hole and there's where our baluster is going to go into. So now, just need to drill 17 more holes. starting your hole, okay, you're getting that tip right on the cross that you've made from the center line of the cap and the line from center from the top. Keep an eye on where your drill, you need to have this pretty close to level. You can't just drill it at a crazy angle. It needs to be pretty close so you could slide the baluster into the hole nicely, okay? So try to keep the drill as straight up and down, left and right. Try to keep it as centered as possible. All the holes are drilled upstairs. We've got the iron that we need. Now we're cutting it on the iron chop saw. I've set up a little block at my measurement two inches or an inch and a half bigger than the opening from the cap to the bottom of the handrail. So in this case, it's an inch and a half bigger. Um, in the iron baluster video, I did a little bit more explanation on cutting. So we're just gonna fly through the cutting portion and get to the installation portion because that's where most of the questions came in is right on the installation. So let's just cut all these out and head back up to install.
no safety glasses. I know, guys, no safety glasses, but I'm looking down and I'm not gonna get my eyes. So I, I know, I know. Alrighty, guys, we're ready to install the iron now. Um, in this case, there's a special layout in the balusters. There's three different balusters, so don't focus on the different balusters in the layout that I've made. More try to focus on how I'm installing them. Uh, the layout can be fun for you and uh, the family to like lay them out on the floor and try to figure out the design. So in this case, just try to really focus on how I'm installing them and getting them secured. So the first one we're gonna start out with, okay? We're gonna slide our boot on the baluster, okay? And remember, there's an Allen key on all the boots. I wanna point all those my way so they're easy to tighten. So each Allen key is gonna be pointed towards me. So we need to get the baluster. We need to slide it down, okay? We have our inch and a quarter screws ready to go. Got an inch and a quarter screw on the end of the drill. Okay, so now we're down into the hole. The Allen key is pointed towards me. I now need to slide it up in, okay? And I need to hold it snug to the rail. Now get real close in here for me so you guys can see what's going on. So now I need to get the screw tight to the edge, okay? Tight to the edge. I'm pulling up on the baluster. I'm gonna screw this in, hold it tight. And there it is. So this screw is now pinched against the baluster really tightly. Drop that down and she's nice and solid. Okay. Let's do the next one. Allen key towards me, sliding it down into the hole. Slide it up, hold it tight, okay? Once again, let's get in here really, really close for them to see. Got the screw going in right parallel to the baluster, okay? Nice and snug. And then the head of the screw is scratching across the baluster and pinching it nice and tight. So the screw is on the side of the baluster and it's pinching the baluster tight in the hole. Once again, guys, just, just so you could really see. I know I might be going over reiterating this way too much, but we've got the baluster in the hole. We slide the baluster up nice and tight, okay? We're holding the baluster nice and tight up. We're not forcing the handrail so it bows, but we're holding it tight. Now come down to the bottom. Screw right parallel next to the baluster, okay? Now watch. Let me reposition for you. Let me get the screw back on the drill. Okay, going back in, nice and parallel. Now watch, I'm running it in gently. The head of the screw is hit the side of the baluster. Now it's scratching it and pinching it into place. So if you could see that, the screw is on the side of the baluster really tight until the point of the head of the screw scratches and pinches the baluster to the wood. Right. any other way that you think that I can help our audience out on explaining just a better way right now? Not really? No, it's pretty simple. Pretty, it is pretty simple. I think this is so much easier than gluing, epoxying. It's, clean. I mean, it's cleaner. It's cleaner. Guys, this baluster is snug. Like I can move it to the point where it, it's flexing and it's not moving. Maybe you have a damaged baluster in the future and you need to take it out. All it is is one screw at the bottom and it can slide right out for you to replace. So that's why I like this system so much. And uh, hopefully this is just helping a couple of you out that have asked some awesome detailed questions um, on the channel of how I'm doing this. Sometimes it's hard for me to get every single step perfectly explained. So hopefully this is just a little additional advice and a follow up on that other iron iron baluster installation. So 
So guys, we've got to end it there. We're missing two double twists. So let's check out these balusters. This is a basket. It's called a basket. Here is a double twist. One twist up top, one twist down. And here's a single twist. So as you can see in the pattern, the twists make a circle where it's kind of like a figure eight all the way across the twist around the baskets. So just this special design, um, that's how we're laying this design out. So we get a nice little figure eight of twists over and around each basket. We're missing two. We can come back and install those after the house is already completely finished. I know a bunch of you say that it's kind of a waste on the painters to come in and tape all of them off, but people are living in the home, so we need to make sure that this is secured for the animals and for the homeowners so they can walk through. Alrighty guys. One little easy section of rail. I hope you learned something and I was, I hope I was able to explain a little bit more and Brian was, was able to show a little bit more in detail of really how to get those iron balusters in and secured. Um, thanks for watching guys. If you enjoyed, if you learned something, please hammer that like button, subscribe to the channel. It's free, nothing to you. Helps me and Brian out tremendously. So hit that subscribe button, uh, turn on those bills, let you know when our next uh, video comes out either a walkthrough or another how-to. Thanks to you all. We'll see you.